Well, hello and welcome to this video. Now, understanding these five things to focus on in your art business will help you get set up for success from the get-go. The worst thing you can do is somehow blunder into the year with your fingers crossed, kind of hoping for the best. Now, unless you take control and decide on the results that you would like for your business, you will get results. They're just not gonna be the ones that you actually probably are looking for right now. So for example, you might have exhibitions with no sales, applications with no response, marketing effort with five people that join your mailing list. You probably get the idea. And I don't think that you want those as your results this year. So if you prefer to decide exactly what you want and plan a strategy to get yourself there, then this video and this whole channel is gonna be for you. Now, in case we haven't met, I'm Sophie, artist, coach, and entrepreneur helping artists just like you to make more sales by building that profitable art business. On this channel, you'll find lots of playlists on all things art business related. You'll even find one where I share a little bit of my sketching challenge that I'm doing at the moment. A one year long sketching challenge where I was trying to sketch every day. It's kind of more like every other day at the moment, but you know what? I'm really happy with that. At time of shooting, I'm gonna be doing day 71, and I would never have thought when I started out that I'd be this far along. So if you wanna follow that, make sure to have a look at the links below this as well. Okay, let's talk about those five things that you need to focus on in your art business this year. I feel a drum roll coming. I feel like you're gonna know what my number one is gonna be. It's always the number one. It's the thing I talk about all the time. So if you're a regular viewer or if you're a customer of mine, you're all gonna shout out together, number one. And by, these, by the way, these aren't really in priority order. They sort of are, but not really. Number one, drum roll, create your business plan. And that's where you go, oh. Yes, I know, love it or hate it, the business plan is your guide to building a successful business, right? I'm holding it like that as if I'm holding it in my hands. I could do, it's over there, silly me. But imagine that I've got a business plan in my hand. This is your roadmap to success, if you like. And if you don't put one together, you're kind of letting yourself down in a way. I'm gonna just give you a few of the highlights of why I think having a business plan is perfect for you. Well, first of all, you're gonna help, it's gonna help you with finding out how much money do you want to make in your art business? How much of that is profit? How much of that is gonna be a salary that you're gonna draw down into your bank account? It's gonna help you to choose which products and or services to create and which ones you should focus on first. Creating that business plan is gonna help you work out your ideal target market and that perfect customer. They always talk about the ideal customer avatar and the perfect audience for what you are actually selling, right? All right, having the business plan is also gonna help you get the pricing correct, right? This is such an important part. You work out what it is you're gonna be selling, you work out who you want to buy, and you've also gotta work out well, what is your pricing strategy. So all of that is in the business plan. It's also gonna help you to know how to choose which marketing strategies will get your products or and or art services in front of that target audience so that they can buy or have the opportunity to buy. I always think they're always gonna buy. Have the opportunity to buy. And of course, it's gonna help you nail your business finances so that you can love counting all that cash and all that money coming in, right? And that's just some of the reasons why having a business plan is critical. Without a clear plan, quite honestly, you could be wasting hours of your trying, trying this thing, trying that thing, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that, without actually working out what is the right thing for you. You could potentially lose lots of hundreds of dollars or pounds or euros, whatever your um, currency is, but you could lose a lot of money as well going down those avenues. So many people say to me, Sophie, I tried selling at an exhibition. I'm like, hey, where was, where was the exhibition? Oh, it was in the middle of nowhere, nobody came. Like, it's just, you just want to work out what is going to be the best thing for you, the best fit for you, and how's the, how is the best way to build that art business so that it supports you and your lifestyle. Um, honestly, having a plan is the number one thing, which is why I put it first. But do check out my little course, Build Your Artist Business Plan, because it solves all of this in a flash. Right, and you can get in, do the plan, follow, watch the videos, get done, get out again, and you can say to me, Sophie, I've done that, I've ticked off number one. So if you wanna check out that, just grab the link directly below this video. The second thing that you wanna focus on in your art business is, of course, growing your mailing list. Why, I hear you shout out. It's the only thing you control, right? You own it, you control it, it's your mailing list. 
right? When you focus on building an audience on somebody else's platform, i.e. social media, etc., and even this platform on, I'm on here, right? This is not your platform. That platform could close down tomorrow and suddenly you're gonna tear your hair out going, well, I had 30,000 followers on Instagram who were following me, but now Instagram's no more, now I have nothing. All right, it's super important you take control of that and you build a mailing list that is yours. So when I started out in my business, we didn't have all this online email marketing. We had the good old fashioned write a letter and print it out and stick it in an, that's I'm not that old, but stick it in an envelope and put it in the post or put it through someone's door. And sometimes I think it was a lot easier. It was all about building a list of people who were A, interested in coming to an exhibition and B, who'd already bought, right? So customers and interested parties. That was the entire focus of the marketing. That's all I did was write and send out letters, send out invites. And that was a really, really critical piece to understand when building a business. And now we have all these tools to do it online. We don't even have to, I used to walk the streets with the envelopes, putting them through the doors. Don't have to do that anymore. Don't have to pay for postage. I sometimes think when people say to me, Sophie, I have to pay for this email marketing platform. Yeah, try sending out a few hundred letters and see what that's gonna cost you. All right, it's really nothing. And there's so many other things you can do on an email marketing platform these days as well. So it can be a lot harder to build an audience on social media as well. And, and sometimes you're, you're building the followers, but they're not even the right followers. So you don't even know who they are half the time. So when people join your mailing list, they've opted in. They've said, yes, I wanna hear more from you. Yes, I'm interested in what you're doing. And if they don't wanna hear any more from you, they can unsubscribe, all right? It's a really powerful tool. Then you can send emails where you build trust and you communicate with them and you let them know periodically what you have for sale. Hey, get a discount code, jump over to my shop as I've just dropped a whole new um, range of prints and I'd love to offer you 20% off for the, for the next 24 hours because you are members of my studio VIP email list, right? It's super, super powerful. And you ask anybody who's really making money in their business, they're doing it because they have a mailing list. They're not doing it because they're slogging away to grow the, the followers on Instagram. It's turning those followers, if you can, getting them off Instagram or whatever platform you're on. I say Instagram because it's the most asked for thing I get all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's great. Let's focus on building the mailing list. So if you can, if you're doing social media, and if you can build a strategy where you move them across from the social media onto the mailing list, then you're all good, right? This is gonna be the second thing to focus on this year. So what do you need to do? Well, number one, if you haven't got a mailing list, you need to set one up. And number two, you need to have a strategy to grow that list. For example, my YouTube channel uh, provides me with people, new, new leads onto my list every single day. I mean, it's a great, what a great platform. It's of course not the only platform. There are many, many other ways and I have other videos on ways that you can grow your mailing list, which you can check out below this one, all right? I'll put links below. And don't forget, you can use ads to speed things up if you have a bit of a marketing budget consider that discount voucher you know for the very first purchase there's all sorts of things you can do to grow that list as i say check out the videos below this one all right number three talking about marketing this next one we want to focus on in our art business is improving your marketing skills all right it's an area you want to focus on a lot this year any year really but particularly this year Every day, more and more people are looking to sell online. More and more artists are looking to sell online. If you're looking to sell online or even offline, you're going to need to improve your marketing game. If you're not where you wanna be business-wise, if you're not making the sales, if you're not growing that email list, and you're sitting in a place of frustration, you know, there's a few reasons why that can be, but one of them is, is a lack of marketing. And I see, it, I see it all the time. So whether you sell online or off or a mixture of both, this is gonna work for you. So if you are in charge of your marketing, you need to up the game, all right? So what does this look like typically? First up, you wanna focus where your audience are already hanging out, which you'll know once you've completed your business plan, all right? Then you need to choose three to five strategies Oh, you're gonna do that in the business plan as well, actually thinking about that. I didn't even realize that as I wrote that. You're gonna choose three to five strategies such as YouTube, Pinterest, ads, PR, email, networking, blogging, whatever it is for you. 
and then you're going to decide on what might work together. So for example, if you decide to do the blogging, sending pins to that blog can work really, really well. And also creating that blog into a video um, can also work really, really well as well. And then from there, when you have a blog or a video, you can offer people a link to where they can either join your email list or whether they can go and buy something already. Use a weekly planner and commit to doing marketing tasks daily. Now I know you're saying to me, Sophie, but I need to paint. Sophie, but I need to create. Well, if you want to build a business until you get to the point where you can outsource the marketing stuff, you've got to do it all, right? You've got to wear the marketing hat, the business building hat, the admin hat, the finance hat, <laughs> the painter hat, mm, the creator hat, right? You need to wear all those hats and be prepared to switch between, right, this is my marketing. I've set aside two hours today. I'm just going to do marketing tasks. Tomorrow, I've set aside three hours. I'm going to do it. When I first started out in business back in the day as an artist, I was told I should spend 50% of my time marketing as a new business. And I have pretty much stuck to that rule, right? If you're at ground zero, you've got you know, artwork to sell, or you've got art courses, you've got something to sell, but you're not making any sales, one of the first things you've got to do is you've got to spend a lot of time on the marketing. And don't worry, I mean, I've got marketing videos on this channel, but there's another kind of good one, I think. I'm quite excited about this next video. I think you're going to want to even subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on this next video. Hmm, there's a special marketing video coming up after this one. All right, so you're going to want to improve that. Use the weekly planner, and then you do, you do things like, for example, you say, okay, I'm going to, each week I'm going to write a blog. I'm going to create 20 pins that lead to the blog and other things, maybe art listings or whatever you've got going. I'm going to create a minimum of five Instagram stories and five Instagram posts, and I'm going to send out two emails. That's how a typical week might look at a minimum, right? And honestly, the more that you put yourself out there, and I know a lot of people don't like that, but there's lots of ways you can do it without putting your face out there these days, the higher the sales are going to be. Assuming, of course, you're putting the marketing out to the right audience. That comes back to understanding the business plan. All right, remember, somebody needs to see your content or your offer around seven times before they might consider to buy, all right? So putting one post out, I've got new artwork on my website, it's just gonna sink, all right? You need posts and emails and video, you need lots of different content so people begin to say, oh yeah, she's got new, <laughs> she or he has got new prints out, there's a new print collection, that's exciting. Even quicker, if you put all that marketing into growing the mailing list, because then all you gotta do is send emails to the people who are interested. Mm -hmm. All right, number four, I hope you're getting this. I hope you're gonna get excited about this. Exciting, I'm jumping on my stool here, <laughs> I'm excited. Number four thing that you want to focus in on your art business is the figures. You wanna focus in on the numbers. All right, this often gets totally overlooked in the excitement of the marketing and the sales and the planning, it's all very lovely. But actually, you need to know your numbers, right? So, if I picked up the phone today, do you remember those things, those things we used to? They used to, right? Actually, they used to dial like that. And you're going, eh, eh. This puts me at a really old age. You're all thinking, my God, how old are you? So you pick up your phone and I ring you today and I say, ring, ring, ring. And I say, oh, hi, can I ask you three questions about your art business? And you say to me, yes, I'd be delighted. And I say, question number one, what's your business break even point? And you give me the answer. And then I say, question number two, how much profit, oh, on, how much profit did you make last quarter? you give me the answer. And then I say, great. And lastly, all right, how many items do you need to sell this month to hit your target? Now, here's the thing, thank you very much. So how many of you could answer all three questions off the top of your head? Whether you could or whether you couldn't, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know how clear you are with your finances. Do you understand the sort of financial lingo? Do you feel at home with it? Is it okay? Would you like to learn more? Um, are you in profit? Are you at the beginning of the business? Have you not set up yet? Like, where are you on the journey? And if, of course, you could answer all those three questions, say, yes, it's me. I have the answer to all three questions. You don't need to share that. Obviously, that's private. But I would love to know if you can answer those questions. And then you give me the phone number and I'm going to ring you and check. No, not really. Honestly, I promise. So understanding your business numbers, even if they are super simple right now, it's going to help you to take action on those marketing tasks, right? It's going to help you to stay on top of your potential sales 
And of course, it's gonna mean that you're on the way to building that successful art business that I know that you really want. All right, here we are, number five thing that you should focus on this year to grow your successful art business. Drum roll again. Lastly, but definitely most importantly, <laughs> is working on your mindset. It's crucial. All right, so what is your mindset? Your mindset comprises of a collection of beliefs that mold your perception of the world and your own kind of identity. It plays a massive role in shaping your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions in various situations. It means that what you believe about yourself impacts your success or your failure. So example, if you believe you can sell your art, you can. If you believe you can't sell your art, nobody buys art at the moment, whatever that belief is. That's also true, all right? So you're often we're hampered by beliefs that we've picked up along our life journey. It's not our fault, but right now it's a great time to realize, ha, huh, okay, I run this little thought in the back of my head that says money doesn't grow on trees. Somebody told me that when I was growing up. Now for me, my father very helpfully told me that when I was younger, I must have asked for something. And he said very sternly, money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work for every penny. Now, do you think that impacted me growing up? 100%. Do you think that knowing it, understanding it, means that you could then change it? Absolutely, thank goodness. None of it is set in stone, it's all changeable. But understanding at the beginning that how we think, and then even if we layer that, how we feel, what emotion is associated to that thought, impacts the results that you're getting on a day-by-day -day basis. Now, I imagine that you would really love to be getting high quality results. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh yeah, I remember being told something like that at school, you know, does that run as a little program at the back of your mind? And the answer is yes, for pretty much everybody. That's very unlikely. We're all born with, with, we're all born pure, but unfortunately, as we grow up through life, we hear things, we adopt beliefs, we adopt them as our own, and then we make sort of actions. We have thoughts and actions and feelings according to that, but you can change it. And so my suggestion to you is I have definitely got a playlist on mindset. I'm definitely planning on making more videos, mindset specifically on the law of attraction and manifestation, because I think a lot of people are using these tools. I'm using these tools. And I think also sometimes it's given a bit of a bad name. Oh, I'm just gonna sit there and meditate. The painting's gonna sell. It doesn't work like that. However, you can work it so that you can build the business without so much effort and without any stress and negative thought, right? Wouldn't it be amazing if you woke up in the morning just knowing inside you today was the day you're gonna make another big sale and you go to your bank account and you go, oh, oh, there it is, fantastic, all right? So all of this is in the realms of possibility. Where should you start? Well, you know, a lot of people start out with a popularized version of the law of attraction, the movie, The Secret. If you've not seen it, it's a brilliant place to start. I think you can just go, there's a link. I'll find a link and put it below the video. If you're like, yeah, old hat Sophie, watched The Secret, read the book, then it's like, okay, great, but what else could you be doing now? Because watching the movie, reading the book is just the start of your journey. You know, actually understanding how to work the stuff and working it to help you grow your business is another little daily action that you can add to your list. And there's so many things you can do. So again, I will link to the mindset videos. But if you're at the very beginning and you're curious, then I would suggest picking The Secret or the book Ask and It Is Given, Think and Grow Rich, The Power of Now, and many, 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 many more. There's actually a beautiful book called The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. You could start with that one. That's quite a thin and pretty magical book. So again, I'm happy to link those below, or well, not link, but list them below. So we know now that these things are super important. We've got the mindset to work on and we've got four things to work on here as well, haven't we? We've got to get that business plan going. We've got to build that mailing list. We've got to improve on our marketing skills and we've got to really know our numbers. And those four things plus the mindset 
honestly, if you can improve all those areas, you're definitely going to be seeing a whole level of different results. I'm super excited for you. Please let me know in the comments if this video has been helpful, what you'd like to hear more of, etc. And don't forget to subscribe and give this video some love if you've enjoyed it and look out for that special marketing video that's coming. In the meanwhile, on screen, I suggest if you haven't, watch the biggest mistake you can make in your art business in 2024 because it's related to this one. All right, thank you so much for watching everyone. Have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.